Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how I make ground foam at home and I make it in all the textures, sizes and colours that you can buy in the stores. So here's an example of all the different ground foam that I make. Lots of different colours, different textures. Um, on the left hand side of the picture I sprinkled some Woodland Scenics fine turf, the blended turf, the green blend, uh, just to check for compatibility and it works really well. So first of all I need to get my base material ready and after the second phase my base material looks like this. Now after doing some research online I picked myself up one of these but this takes a long time it's messy there's drying times so I decided to work out a better way of preparing the base material. Now for the base material itself I tried some different foams these are foams that are used in upholstery. This is the kind of stuff that they make cushions for office chairs from. Worked out quite expensive. Uh, it gave a good result, but the cost became prohibitive and I wasn't really happy with the, the blue as a, a base colour. I found that my, that my paints weren't coming through in the way that I wanted them to. So, after a few trials, I found these jumbo sponges, car sponges. Uh, these come to 149, let's say 150, so they're 50 pence each. And that's a lovely, rich yellow colour for the base material. Same thing with these, these are about one pound for the two of them. A really nice rich colour, a good volume of measurement, you know, one sponge at a time. Um, and I'm really happy with the result, so I use these all the time now. After trying out the blender, I decided to go for something a little bit more efficient. Now this is a drill driver, it's a DIY one, this is one that I have around the home the most important thing here is the wire brush attachment on the end. You'll notice that I keep it fairly slow and I have the torque set quite low. And I'll show you now how I use this. This is a hand guard which just sits on the bucket like so. And this allows me to put the sponge at this side and the drill driver this side. And I just lean the handle on the side of the bucket. One, one sponge. There's a lot of static in there, so a quick squirt of water. Mop it up with the sponge. And that's ready to go into the mixing bowl. So my obliterator gives me something like this and that's a really nice grist and I can just take some of that and use it. If I want those kind of clump foliage bushes then that's fine. But the only way to turn this into this 
which is very fine. You can see how that's kind of floating down just how you want it. The only way to turn that into that is with a grinder. You can't get this texture with any kind of blender or chopper. You need a grinder. So, I took myself online and got myself one of these. This is a hand cranked kitchen grinder. This cost me £12. Very, very cheap. Again, that's about $15. And it comes with a number of attachments. Has a worm. Not too bad. It sets up on the worktop like so. Keep a plastic bowl underneath it. Feed your raw material into the top. And then grind it. And get the results. Now what I have yeah. in these tubs here is all of my bush and tree making textures. Lots of different colours. Some you've got more yellow in. Some, if you look in there, you'll see there's ground up leaves and twigs and things. Lots of organic matter. Now, for this, the cheap grinder is fine. That works just fine. So for 12 quid, $15, um, that has worked fine for me. But it didn't give me all of the textures that I needed. So I got myself one of these. And this is a really, really good tool. It's uh, a universal grinder, cast iron, available on the internet. This has a much larger capacity and the cut is so much finer. There are a couple of attachments in there and there are two blades working alongside this worm and that just gives me really really good results. So I break my raw material into manageable handfuls like so and then just pop them into the grinder and I start to wind. And I'm not breaking my arm, I'm just turning a handle. It's not a race and I'm not going to struggle with it. If I do feel resistance, sometimes you get a bit of a blockage in there, then I just go back to free up the front and then go again. Put some more in, not too much at a time. Um, coming out of there. You can see already that we have this into this. That's just one grind. Before I move on, this is moss, actual dried moss. Get this from the, uh, at the art store. Already dried, but I leave it for a couple of weeks in uh, an open container. Now, if I'm going to be using this for bushes, trees and things, then I like to get some of that in there. And it's also a good grinding agent. It kind of just really helps keep the grinder clear. A tiny touch of that in there with it. Nice and smooth. A 
and that's just added some extra texture into there. So I had a sponge in there and I've ground down a fair amount. That's enough to be working with for now. So a quick word on compatibility and getting the colours right. Before I run too far ahead and start grading the, the ground foam. For compatibility you want to avoid the greens. Try not to use them. You need to use I know very high contrast colours. So something like a, a sap green, olive green, if you're using these acrylics or just emulsion paints you will end up with a very dull and drab looking colour and it won't photograph well so you need very high contrast colours so a good strong yellow at least cadmium and uh, ultramarine blue you mix those together to get your green colours so here's the mix that I've made into a very basic kind of all around green but what I want to do is I want to make it compatible so I've taken some woodland scenics clump foliage in a, a kind of a medium green color and you'll see straight away that it's very rich and it has a higher tone a very high tone and contrast now I did discover this recently this is a chrome green and I picked this up because it's a very similar color to the Woodland Scenics green grass so I will try that but this is for tone and contrast like a not a high or a low light just to add depth so, so first with the ultramarine blue a nice colour, a good strong colour, but not as rich and tonal as that. So next, the earth green. That's actually not too bad. It's not the same, it's not quite as rich, but that would certainly be compatible on the same layout. And now this is with the chromium green. Oh yeah, that's much better. That is definitely compatible. So there you go. That's my new uh, tone additive when I want to match up with something Woodland now, Scenics. It's good to do these tests and the reason why I like to do them is that Woodland Scenics have really, if they've done anything, they've got the colours right. The colours really, really are good. So that's why I like to make sure that I'm at least keeping up with that kind of shade when I make my own stuff. And that way if I want to do a layout or a dio or something and I want to mix the Woodland Scenics or the Knock or the bush, whatever, all together with my own stuff, then it's going to work really nice. I don't want my material to stick out from all the others. So that's good. So okay. once I've made sure the bowl is clean and dry, I take big sieve number one. Uh, this has taken a beating. I use this for sieving all the sand when I do the concrete modelling on the garden railway in G-scale. So I'll take this mixture and I'll just put that all in there and I'll sieve it. You can see the finer material coming through already. So I'll just sieve this through and then I'll come back. Okay, so that's gone through. What's left will go back into there. So now in here I have some really really nice ground foam and that's already taken a lovely form, lovely texture. 
So I'll just pour that into this bowl. So this is a process of removal. Taking that the large chunks out, they're going to go back in to the grinder. And now I take a medium sized sieve. I'm not going to put all of this in at once because I want to just the more you put in the sieve the longer it takes the harder it is. Now you can see the finer material coming out of there. So I'll sieve this through and I'll come back. So as I'm going through the sieving process what's left in the sieve at this phase with this sieve is put into this container so I'm separating it, I'm keeping this and putting it in there the first lot went back into the mix this is going into there the finer stuff staying in the big tub so I think that's got it so I'll put that in there and you can see in here now we have a really really much finer material look at that it's really nice and soft and light and dusty but still not ready this is ready let's just get that over there for a minute this is ready this is a lovely coarse texture that I will use now for trees and bushes kind of bushes like this nice 3D transparent bushes built up in layers hey, there's a chaos marine there this one is for the war gamers too so you can see how they work this is going to go into there and then <laughs> a smaller sieve and then I use a real really really fine sieve just give it a quick run through with that and I'm left with this almost it's like dust this is as fine as you can get and that is your pure fine turf and the leftovers from that are in there here is a kind of a coarse turf and in the big bowl there is a really 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 fine dusty powder just like the, the fine turf that you can buy and in here it's all the, the big stuff so that's how I transform one of these through this into this using one of these some of them and some of them here's a, a batch of more compatible nice rich medium green that's coarse turf that I made earlier and also because I've got a grinder I just find myself grinding up everything this is a, a small purple kitchen sponge just ground it up I'll use that for some flowers or something. I grind up leaves, bushes, moss, all sorts of plant roots, everything. So, hope you've enjoyed seeing how I do this all at home. A very, very low cost alternative to going out and buying it all. Um, next time, I'll show you how to make a whole square yard of these bushes a whole square yard for about one pound fifty 
So uh, please leave a thumb and a comment, any feedback on how I could do this better, things like that would be welcome. In the meantime, take care and all the best.